welcome, welcome, welcome to worship. We are so glad to invite you into this space on this the Lord's Day. Good morning, I am Minister Otis Bird Jr., assistant to the pastor for online ministry here at the historic Alfred Street Baptist Church, and we are so glad to intentionally engage with you, our virtual church family here on the Prelude. Remember, we're here every Sunday morning at 7.36 and 10.36 a.m., and we invite you to always come in, hang out with us, and chat with us a few minutes before worship begins. You all know how we do it. Go ahead and put your names and your cities in the chat box. We want to be able to shout you out in just a few moments and welcome you into worship. Our in-person worshipers have already begun to fill the sanctuary. As you can hear and see, our Sanctified Symphony Orchestra and musicians are already filling the air with glorious and melodious praise. So we're ready and we're excited about worship on today. Well, you all know there's always something going on in these Alfred streets, and yesterday was no different. We continued the legacy of Feed the 5,000, and this morning we have a very special guest with us this morning, the Deacon Daryl Howell. Go ahead and uh, greet the prelude on this morning. Uh, good morning, worshipers. Uh, Daryl Howell here with the Feed the 5,000 Project. Blessed to be a servant leader here at Alfred Street and one of the leads for Feed the 5,000. Quick question, how long have you been a member of Alfred Street? Ooh, we, I have been a member of Alfred Street since 1979. Yes, sir. Grew up here. Absolutely. You have parents here? Mom and dad here. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Legacy. Legacy. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Deacon Howell, talk to us about Feed the 5,000, how it began, the purpose, all of those great things. Awesome question. So, Feed the 5,000 began when, our, when, when Pastor Wesley came, instead of an anniversary gift, you know, he don't want no airplane. He don't want no nothing like that. He is a servant leader at heart. So he said, wow. I want to serve the community. So he gave the vision. He and our missions director at the time, Rosette Graham, yes. love her dearly, yes, yes, sat yes. down, cast the vision, Feed the 5,000, started in 2012 and has grown every year. Wow, and just tell us some of the wonderful things that occurred on yesterday. Oh, How many people did we reach? goodness, we blessed 1,200 families with a week's worth of groceries. You know how much groceries are these Absolutely. days. Absolutely, it's real. Uh, it's real. <laughs> Bless them mightily. We had over 400 volunteers who gave their heart, gave their hands to serve, so it was a beautiful day. Absolutely, absolutely. We are so grateful to be able to serve and to be blessed here at Alfred Street, to be a blessing Amen. to not only those inside of these walls, but to the greater community. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Deacon Howard, we thank you for hanging out with us. And we, oh, 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 you mentioned Rosette Graham, which was one name on our volunteer shirts, and there was another name. Ooh, Talk to us about that name. Bill Emery, Bill Emery. That is a name above so many names. So Bill was probably our number one volunteer with most of our mission wow, projects. Wow. So we just felt it necessary to honor him. So great uh, servant leader here at Alfred Street. Uh, he's with the Lord right now, but he just blessed us over and over. We certainly have angels still watching over us. Amen. Absolutely. Thanks for being with God us, Nick. How we'll see you worship. We'll see All righty. Well, you all, go ahead, continue to put your names into the chat box. We want to shout you out this morning. Let's see, Tiffany, what we have. Thank you, thank you. Let's see, we have um, the Red Bow, who's checking in from Charlotte, North Carolina. Good morning and welcome. We have Mary Bedgood, who is checking in from Montgomery, Alabama. The South is in the house. Good morning and welcome. Uh, we have Annette Dixon-Brown, who's checking in right here from Washington, D.C., representing DG6, Discipleship Group 6, is representing this morning. And let's see, one more. Uh, we have the, the Kima Family Church worshiping all the way from Toronto, Canada. Alfred Street is worshiping everywhere this morning, both in person and in the virtual space, and we welcome you into uh, the Lord's house. Well, you all, it's time for our top five things going on at Alfred Street this week, coming in at number five. Today, today at 11.59, ends the application process for open positions for the church council. If you discern the Lord calling you, if you're a member of the church and discern the Lord calling you to serve in a leadership capacity, we encourage you to check out the church website to uh, find out the information about the open positions and get your applications in by tonight at 11.59 p.m. And we look forward to all of the great things that God has in store for us in 2025. Coming in at number four, save the date. That's right, save the date. 
Coming up, we have the largest HBCU festival in the country, and it's hosted by yours truly, the Alfred Street Baptist Church. It is coming, and that will be held on November 8th and November 9th. November 8th and 9th, you can go to our website, find more information, and register today. You all know education is an important part of the culture here at Alfred Street Baptist Church. We believe in investing in education and investing into our HBCU. So we encourage you to register for that festival coming your way November 8th and November 9th. Coming in at number three, turn to your neighbor and say number three, it's that time of year again. Our youth programs are coming off from their summer rest and they will resume next Sunday, October 6th. So if you have children, youth that um, are active here at Alpha Street Baptist Church, we encourage you to bring them starting October 6th to engage in Kid Street, crossover and higher ground under the leadership and direction of amazing volunteers and staffs and the Reverend Denzel Goodland, our assistant to the pastor for children and youth ministries. Coming in at number two, Number two, we are excited about the Alfred Street experience. We are headed to Charlotte, Charlotte, North Carolina. We started in Philly and Charlotte, we are headed your way October 17th. Get ready, get ready. We have a promo video. We'd like for you to check it out now. They're, and how close they're gonna be to the audience. And we're just excited overall. We got a lot of rehearsals coming up in preparation for this. It's just gonna take some time to really transform this space, really make it feel like a sanctuary and really feel like holy ground. Good news is we got a few weeks. We, a few <laughs> we got a few we weeks to get it together. If the praises go up, the presence will come down. Come down. All right, Charlotte, let's go. Oh my gosh, back at it again. Back at it. Oh my gosh, back at it again. Back at it. That's right, that's right, Charlotte. We are headed your way October 17th. Meet us in Charlotte. Then you are coming in at number one. Today is Mission Sunday. Yes, we believe in education, but you also know our mission work here at Alfred Street is very, very important. And today we are happy to welcome the Reverend Dr. Gina Stewart all the way from Memphis, Tennessee. She is the first female president of the Lot Carey Convention. And we are so excited to experience her preaching the word of God. If you all miss eight o'clock, you don't want to miss 11. You are in for a treat as she stands to powerfully proclaim the word of God. We are excited to welcome Reverend Dr. Gina Stewart to Alfred Street Baptist Church this morning as we observe Mission Sunday. Well, you all, let's do a few more shout outs. Thank you, Tiffany. Let's see who we have this morning. Uh, we have Frida Freeman, who is checking in from Gresham, Oregon. Alpha Street is everywhere this morning. Good morning and welcome. We have Lois Wright who is checking in from New Orleans, Louisiana. Good morning and welcome. Latunji Peace checking in from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Good morning. Mary DeWalt checking in from Charlotte. We hope to see you in Charlotte on the 17th. And let's see one more. We have Max Brown who is checking in from Charles City, Virginia. Good morning and welcome, welcome to worship. Welcome to the prelude. We are excited to have you all. Well, yesterday was Feed the 5,000 and today is Mission Sunday. And who better else to talk about all of those great things than our assistant to the pastor for mission, the Reverend Dr. Marcia Norfleet. Go ahead and well, uh, say good morning to the prelude. How are you all? It is so good to be here this morning. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's talk all things mission. All what, things Talk mission. about all of the things that you do, including uh, Deacon Howell, of course, talked about Feed the 5,000. But Feed let's talk five, about the mission work. There's Feed the 5,000, there's Brothers Keeper. We have uh, a Heart to Serve, which is our homeless outreach ministry that happens every month. We service at the Carpenter Shelter. We give haircuts at the Carpenter Shelter as well as Feed. And we do international missions. Woo. As Dr. Gina re referenced to today uh, in Liberia, we gave solar panels to a school that has turned their lives around. It gave them electricity and fresh water. Which she said increased their learning exponentially. Exponentially. My, my, my. This is what we do at Alpha Street. I mean, we reach as far as we can reach. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And we thank you for allowing us to reach and leading that effort. Praise the Lord. And we thank you for being with us here on the prelude, and we'll see you in worship. Absolutely, absolutely. See you later. Thank All right. you. Absolutely. Oh, and happy birthday. You got a birthday coming up. My birthday Wiz is Reverend Wednesday. Wednesday. Reverend Dr. North Fleet, a happy birthday coming up on Wednesday. Woo-hoo. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, you all, it is almost time for worship. We hope that you have your hands ready to clap, hands ready to raise. Even if you got a shout or a dance in your feet, get ready for worship. Get your communion elements, get your family together, and let's begin to worship God together. We will be blessed with the sounds of the Kaya praise team, so you already know there will be amazing sounds, amazing praise and worship lifted from this place. And then, as I said, the Reverend Dr. Gina Marcia Stewart is in the building, you all, and she is going to preach a mighty, mighty word of God. We're excited about worship, the praise team is preparing to come in and we are ready to worship. Let's do a few more shout outs. Thank you, Tiffany. Let's see, we have Dorothy Dotson who is checking in from Butler, Pennsylvania. Good morning and welcome to the prelude. We have Constance Smith who is checking in from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Good morning, Constance. If you don't mind that drive over to Charlotte, come on and join us. We'd love to see you on October 17th. Uh, We have Cynthia Garley, who says good morning from Texas. Uh, Let's see, we have Loretta Riley, who is checking in from my hometown. ATL is in the house, Atlanta, Georgia. Good morning and welcome. We have Kimberly, who is checking in from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Good morning and welcome. We have Kathy Purveyance, who is checking in all the way from the West Coast. Seattle, Washington is in the house. And let's see one more. We have Tammy Douglas, who is checking in from Titusville, Florida, praying that all is well, that you're safe uh, down that way. And we pray for all those who are affected by the current uh, storm that has happened, and we lift them in prayer on this morning. Well, you all, it's time for worship. We're so glad that you joined with us on the prelude, and we'll see you next time. May they be claps, claps of praise. Glory in the highest. Anybody glad to be in the house one more time? Anybody glad to be in his presence one more time? Come on and celebrate the Lord right where you are. Honor him today. Honor him today. Welcome him into this space. Welcome him into this space. God, we give you glory. God, we give you honor. God, we extol your mighty name. Somebody say hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's use our imaginations this morning. And I want you to imagine being in heaven, walking on the sea of glass, and you're entering into the courts to go greet our Father. And when he welcomes you, all you have to say is, God, you are holy. God, you are worthy. And he simply says, I love you. Wouldn't that make you just break down? Because of such a loving God that he is, he cannot wait to embrace you. But I want you to close your eyes while we sing about his holiness this morning. Mm, Only you. Is that 
such a song today Only you And sing that with us right now. Say, Holy. I want you to make it your own to the Father. Only you say worthy. Come on and sing to your dad. Say, Only you are wonderful.
together sing this holy holy not already doing so, I invite you to stand as you're able. As gather, we come into this space to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. 
I shared with the eight o'clock what I need to remind you of that the word holy does not mean perfect. It literally means other. That we come into this place for some other things. For another purpose. For more than just what life has brought you Monday through Saturday. But to gather in this space that is holy unto the Lord our God. Once you hear with reverence the reading of the word of God from Exodus chapter 3. Beginning in verse number 1 to set the tone for our worship on this Sunday morning. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then God said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. This is the word of God for the people of God, and thanks be unto God. The same way Moses had to take his shoes off on holy ground, we enter into worship by taking off the cares and concerns that have attached themselves to us through this past week's journey. Fears, anxieties, frustrations, angers, bitterness, all that the Lord requires us and says, take them off because you're now entering into my space. As we gather today, I would that you remember those of us in our church family who are traveling through the valley of the shadow of death. Today, we lift up the Bordis family, Marilyn and Taylor, and the sudden transition of their husband and father, Dexter Bordis well-beloved of our church family. We remember Todd Shell Young as she mourns the loss of her mother, Deborah Young. Let's remember Sister Louise Ransom, the passing of her husband, Elbert Ransom, another figure of faith in this church family. Remember Deacon Tia Johnson and Al Phillips, the passing of their sister and sister-in-law, Sister Vita Johnson. Let's remember Bernia Ashford, as her father, George Ashford, has gone home to rest with the Lord. And we remember Reggie Davis II and Tamayia Davis, in the past of their grandmother and great-grandmother, Jenny Mae Quattlebaum. And I know for certain that there are others that are in our hearts and on our minds who we pray for today. If there's somebody you carry into worship through intercessory prayer this morning, won't you lift their name aloud as we get ready to go to God? For whom are we praying? Let's mention their names. Pray with me, family. Lord, we thank you that mercies were brand new and that grace is sufficient. And we gather on holy ground today, not because we're worthy of it, but because you spared us once again. So here we come before you, God, confessing that we are sinful and broken, confessing that we are carrying in us concerns that we need to lay at your feet and put in your hands, sharing that there are things we're trying to fix that we cannot handle by ourselves. We come crying unto you, O oh God, because in you we live and move and have our being, and without you, we are nothing. So God, we ask that you would invade this space of worship. We didn't come to be entertained. We didn't come for a fashion show to show off our new outfit. We didn't come for a social club to see who came and who wasn't here. We came because you are God all by yourself. And because of who you are, you deserve our praise. And for what you've done, you deserve our thanksgiving. God, I pray now that you would arrest our minds and our attention, that, that we would not wander in our thinking and our imagination for these few moments on holy ground. That you would anoint these voices that sing. 
that you'll stand in your preacher and give her strength today. That when we leave this place, we will know that this was different than anything else we do all week long. This is not going to the club. This is not going to the gym. This is not brunch at the restaurant. This is worship in the beauty of holiness of the true and the living God. Thank you, God, for the privilege of worshiping. Now, God, we put our lives in your hand, and just as the potter molded clay in an image that was pleasing unto him, mold our lives, God. Speak to our hearts. Lift someone's burden. Give someone discernment of the road they've got to travel this week. Strengthen someone's faith to let them know that whatever Monday's going to bring, God, you've already been there. Let someone know you're still in the healing business. Lord, that you've never met a disease, a sickness that you could not handle. That you still bring relationships back together. You still protect prodigal children. You still break chains and cast out demons and open up closed doors. God, you are still able to do it. And now we ask you to do it in our lives. This we ask in the name of Jesus our Christ as we come to worship. And the redeemed of the Lord who trusted God with everything said amen. I'm going to invite you to remain standing. We've, we've got a, a new congregation. It's not new, but you may not know it. Uh, what's it called again? <laughs> Wonderful words of life. The lyrics will be on the screen because you will need them. Follow along with our Kaya praise team as we lift our voices together in song, Wonderful Words of Life. Beautiful words, wonderful words of life. Hallelujah. Sing them over again. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Oh, words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words. Wonderful 
me a favor, share some of those beautiful and wonderful words with one another as we share the peace and the love of God. Won't you reach out to your neighbor on your left and your right and front and behind and welcome them to worship as we live together in song. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place and I know it's the presence of the Lord. Morning, Alfred Street. To our guests who grace us with the presence of God, by your presence in worship. To our family and friends who are not only in overflow, but connected authentically across the world wide web. Grace and peace be unto each and every one of you. From God who loves us as mother and father and Jesus Christ, who always and alone is our resurrected, our risen, our reigning, and our returning redeemer. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I shared at 8 o'clock, I want to remind you, can I tell you why I like coming to church? Because if I'm in the house of the Lord, that means I'm still in the land of the living. And if I'm in the land of the living, that means mercies were brand new this morning. If mercies were brand new this morning, that means God is still faithful. If God is still faithful, that means the blood still works. If the blood still works, then my sins didn't catch up with me from yesterday. So because my sins didn't catch up with me, because the blood still works, because God is still faithful, because mercies are brand new every morning, because I'm in the land of the living, I will be glad when they say unto me, let us go into the house of the, is there anybody on Sunday morning that's just glad to be in church? This is part of our lifeline to reconnect and establish ourselves with the Lord and fellowship with one another, to hear a word from the Lord, to rejoice in the goodness of God. Today we begin that worship after our praise by the breaking of bread and sharing of cup with everyone in this place who's a born again believer in Jesus Christ. If that's you, then prayerfully you did receive the elements of the Lord's Supper. If you did not, upon your entrance, just wave a hand allow our deacons to have the privilege and opportunity to serve you. As they're doing so, we're gonna encourage those who are watching online to not miss this moment either. That whatever bread or cup you wanna use, it can symbolize the broken body and shed blood of Jesus Christ. I was reminding people earlier that I caught a virus on my laptop this week. And every time I looked up, more spam ads were popping up on the screen. And you know, you hit the little X after a little while to make it go away, and it kept popping back up. I kept pushing the X, it go away, it kept coming back up. Took the laptop to IT, and Torres shared with me, Pastor, you've got a virus on your computer. And even though you keep clicking on the button, because the virus is in the software, it's going to keep coming up. 
He said, we got to purge it and we've got to reset it to its factory settings. Because you got a virus and it keeps popping back up. Your neighbor is viral. Not COVID, not influenza, but a deeper virus called sin. And all of us know what it's like to try to keep pushing it away and making it go somewhere else. And yet the Apostle Paul was right, every time I try to do right, evil keeps popping up. Even when you're trying to do right, that virus keeps popping up. But thanks be to God that we can be reset. We can be restored, we can be forgiven. We can go back to the factory settings where we are the redeemed of the Lord. Maybe that's why Jesus commanded us to remember him and to break bread and drink cup because he knew sin goes into remission. Anybody that's ever sadly dealt with cancer knows that remission means it's gone, but it could come back up. And so we eat bread because it keeps coming back up. It represents the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who alone is our Christ. He was crucified and he died. He was buried and he rose. He showed himself alive to his followers. He ascended into heaven. He is sitting at the right hand of God, making intercessions for our sin. And one day, our Christ is returning. This we believe as we break bread and eat together. And in this cup is the memorial of the blood shed on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins and the redemption of our souls. For what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let us drink again. Pray with me, family. God of amazing grace, through our faith in Jesus Christ, we freely access the blessed gift of salvation that you offer us, the forgiveness of each and every one of our sins, the eternal security of our soul's salvation, the power of the Holy Spirit to dwell within us and guide us into a life that is pleasing in your sight, and the opportunity and obligation we have to share your transformative love with others. God, thank you for forgiving me. Now may I pass that on as I forgive someone else. Lord, thank you for loving me. May I prove my gratitude as I seek to love someone else. This we ask in the name of Jesus, our Christ. Amen. As we gather in worship today, we do want to thank the Lord for God's presence among us through our guests. We take very seriously the words of scripture that whenever you've got a new face in your midst, you ought to be careful how you treat them. You never know when you're sitting next to an angel. If you're a guest of our church family and you don't mind us recognizing you, would you just wave a hand for a moment that we can thank God for our guests. If you've got a hand wave, won't you welcome them on this Sunday morning to Alfred Street. Bless you all. If you're watching in the chat from outside of the Washington, D.C. area, do us a favor, type in the chat where you're watching from. We want to welcome all of you to church on this Sunday. We're grateful that God brought you here. We don't believe it's by accident. We believe it's because it's going to be a blessing unto us, and we hope to be a blessing to you. It's our prayer that the worship and the word and song, and the pew that you sit on will be an encouragement to you. And if ever you're in our area, come on back and worship with us. It would be our joy to receive you once again. Today, we also thank God for the gift of life. There's some folk who put another candle on their cake. They're celebrating a recent birthday. If you're celebrating a recent birthday, would you stand and allow us to thank God for the life God has given unto you? All of our birthday stand. Congratulations. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to each and every one of you. May this be the best and blessed year of life that God has brought your way. 
Then we also want to recognize the gift of marriage and continuing love, that which God has joined together. If we have any couples celebrating another marital anniversary, would you please stand and allow us to celebrate your years of marriage? Will all of our anniversaries please stand? Amen. Remain standing. You know, we like to call out the years around here so that we can give thanks to God. My brother and sister standing up here in the back, how many years is this for you all? Seven. Congratulations on your seventh anniversary. Blessings to you. And what anniversary is this for you all? One. Amen. <laughs> happy birthday on your, I mean, happy anniversary on your first anniversary. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anybody got, a, where, there's another one? Oh, I'm sorry. What year is this for you all? One. Another first. Amen. Happy anniversary. Congratulations to each and every one of you. There's another one? I can't see it. There's one more? I thought they said seven. That was another couple. I'm sorry, what year is this for you all? Two, all right. One plus one equals two, praise the Lord. Congratulations on your second anniversary. We thank God for the gift of love in this place. Um, as we welcome our guests and celebrate life and love, I want to welcome to this place uh, she'll be introduced in the video in just a moment, but she's my big sister in Christ. I love her with all my heart. We're colleagues, we're cohort, we're classmates. She is the first female president of the Lot Carey uh, Forum Mission Forum Baptist Convention. Y'all, would you welcome the Reverend Dr. Gina Marcia Stewart, who is our guest preacher on this Missions Sunday. We are blessed to have her on today. Uh, for three years, she led Lot Carey in such an excellent manner, pushing into new, unprecedented ways. We've got our delegates from Lot Carey who are here as well. I'm going to ask all of our Lot Carey delegates to stand, those who've attended the convention and served. We thank God for them on this morning. And within Lot Carey, the new president of Men on Mission, the men's ministry within Lock Carey is our own Deacon Charles Monterio Sr. Deacon Monterio, congratulations on your election, sir. Amen. From sports ministry to Sunday school to now Lock Carey, you just stay busy, Brother Deacon Monterio, and we celebrate and pray for God's leadership among you with the brothers. Also, there are a whole bunch of sisters here to come to support the Reverend Dr. Gina Marcia Stewart because they are all members of Delta Sigma Theta, and I want to acknowledge the Alpha Street Deltas. They're all over the place. Would y'all stand so that your soar can see you today? All right. Listen, a few things as we move into worship um, that you may understand why we give, the way we give, and what happens with what we give. I want to let you know, remember, church family, that our nominations for church officers will close tomorrow at 11.59 p.m. For several weeks now, we've been asking you to go out to the website to see the open positions, the experiences, the requirements, the type of people we're looking for to help serve in leadership. And remember that you've got to be nominated in order to be elected. And so we're asking you, if you've not done so already, to prayerfully take a look at that. Maybe God is speaking to you or speaking to you about someone else who may be able to help us in leading and continuing the great legacy of the Alpha Street Baptist Church. And so once again, those close on tomorrow at 11.59. Some things are coming up in October I want you to remember. On the 13th of October, which is the second Sunday, in recognition of World Mental Health Day, celebrating mental health awareness and wellness. We're asking you to wear some shade of green. Green is the color for mental health awareness. So if you would, on October 13th, the second Sunday, if you would don some green. And then on the 20th, that next Sunday, is our breast cancer awareness celebration and we praise in pink. And so my apologies that we have to wear pink and green Sunday back to back uh, to all the ladies of Delta Sigma Theta, but the AKs ain't mad about it at all. Uh, green on the 13th, uh, pink on the 20th. Some Deltas came to me afterwards and said, I ain't got no pink and green in my closet. Well, <laughs> amen. Find an AK sister, should be glad to loan you some. Uh, but once again, mental health awareness on the 13th, we are wearing green. And then the celebration of breast cancer awareness and survival, we will be celebrating in pink on the 20th. 
Don't forget that on October 17th, we do have the Alpha Street Experience in Charlotte, Philadelphia. I mean, Charlotte, North Carolina. If you got, <laughs> Philadelphia is where we started. We're on our way to Charlotte. If you got friends and family anywhere in driving distance of North Carolina, we would love to welcome them on the 17th at 7 p.m. at the Bloomingthal Performing Arts Center at the Belk Theater. Spread the word. We're taking our music ministry down there. We're taking our family. We're going to have a good time and worship with those who connect with us virtually in the North Carolina area. And once again, we look forward to being in worship with them. And then if you would make note on the 20th, um, excuse me, on the last Sunday of October the 27th, we're headed down to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church to celebrate the 20th pastoral anniversary of the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby. I'm so grateful to God for us as we go to celebrate him. He was with us last week as we celebrated 16 years of pastoring people, and we're going down there to celebrate with him. Um, it's a little storefront church. Everybody's not going to be able to get in. It's a little small building, uh, but uh, grateful for those who signed up to go in to travel with us that we may celebrate him. As I'm doing so, I also want to thank you all for the tremendous amount of love poured out to celebrate our 16 years as pastor and people on last week. Thank you everyone for the well wishes, the prayers, the cards of encouragement. For everyone that knows I love 7-Eleven coffee and got me a, a 7-Eleven gift card to get me some coffee, I am much appreciative. For those of you all that made fun of me for crying while my son prayed, um, I have no words for you. Um, um, you know, that, that wasn't nice of y'all. Um, but I appreciate the gifts, the love, and I look forward to the 17th year as we continue to make glorious the name of Jesus Christ. One of the ways we do, thank you, thank you. One of the ways we do that, you all know we're a little different at Alpha Street. We don't raise an official offering, nor uh, during pastoral anniversaries do we raise a pastoral love offering. I, I'm blessed and I thank the Lord that I'm blessed enough to make certain we wanna be a blessing back to others. And so several years ago, cast the vision, Dr. Stewart, of our desire to celebrate pastor and people with Feed the 5,000, that we want to replicate that miracle of Jesus of feeding more than 5,000 people who were hungry. And so what started in the basement of this church on yesterday is in full bloom as we welcomed uh, the more than 1,250 families that came as we were able to sell or serve more than 250 homeless neighbors. And so on yesterday, I want to thank you all that we were able to put a full week of groceries into 5,700 people's lives on yesterday. And to God be the glory for that great gift back to those in need. Praise our God. There are so many that took leadership in that. I want to thank their own Dr. Marcia Norfleet. I want to thank Shay Holman. I want to thank Daryl Howell and Shamika Howell and also Angela Liggins. But if you volunteered in any way, if you're one of those 400 people that volunteered between Friday and Saturday, would you stand just so we can thank God for the fellowship and the service of all those? Thank you all. Thank you. I want you to see a quick video recap of yesterday as we get ready to give, because I need you to know you're sowing in a fertile ground. That what we give, we give because the Lord has been good to us. And we give in ways that don't just benefit and bless those under employment, but more so those who are in need. So often the black church has gotten a bad reputation about what it does and does not do with the gifts of those that sow. We try to be open and transparent at Alpha Street that you always see what happens to the money that you give to be a blessing to others. So I'm going to ask our AV team to play this quick video recap. I'll come back and bless our offering. We'll be blessed in song and have a video introduction of our preacher as you get ready to hear a word from God. But once you heed this video announcement about what happened over the last two days. They are your neighbor. We are serving each other, but we are also serving God's people. Most importantly, we are serving God. That is our goal today. So blessed to bless other families. Um, I think we blessed 1,200 families this weekend. We have over 400 volunteers from Alpha Street Baptist Church. We're blessed with a church that just loves to volunteer. Today was really exciting, just seeing all the people that we could bless today and working together um, with the community. It was just really satisfying to see everybody that we could make happy. 
We have been partnering with Giant for the past 10 years. It has always run very smoothly and we are very grateful to them and helping with this process. Giant Food. Giant we partner with Alfred Street Baptist Church to feed the 5,000. It's amazing. It's so much work and effort and so many volunteer hours, but you guys come through every year. And you don't just get, there aren't a whole lot of groups that go out of their way to do this kind of thing. It's almost a necessity for the community, but y'all recognize it. And seeing everyone come together, sunshine and smiles, and everyone's upbeat and uplifted today. I haven't heard any negativity. This is just good for everybody all around, the families we're feeding and the people here working. We are here with Feed the 5000 out here at GW Middle School and we are serving 1,200 families. It is an awesome place to be. It is an awesome task, but it is a blessing to be a blessing. We have so many volunteers from Alfred Street as well as participants coming through the lines in the drive through fashion or coming off public transportation. We also serviced our homeless neighbors, persons experiencing homelessness, so thank you so much, Alpha Street, for everything that you have contributed. We could not have done this without you, your hands, your heart, and offerings. Thank you so much. Feed the 5,000! Feed the 5,000 is one of my favorite events because it's when we get to see Alfred Street at its best. We're all there, shoulder to shoulder, lifting bags, packing groceries, laughing. Most of these folks I usually see in suits. So it's really nice to see everyone in their everyday clothes with the music playing, giving glory to God as you serve others. And this is one of those reminders about where our giving goes. Because we give, we're able to bless families who really need. And so it's a joy to be here today. Thank you. As was mentioned, we don't lift up a formal offering in worship, but we still give from our hearts through all the online platforms that are available that help us support mission work just like that. This is our Mission Sunday, where we focus once again on God's commandment and call to be certain that we are connected to those who are on the margins of life, those who are in need, those who are less fortunate. The reality is no matter where you believe you struggle, there's someone that wishes they had your problems today. There's someone that wishes they had your bills. The reason you have an electric bill is because you have electricity. Amen. The reason you have a car note is because you chose to drive that Benz. That was your selection. And yet God has been so good to us and we complain because of our blessings that create our bills. Poor people don't have bills. They don't walk in the same blessings that too often we take for granted. So my prayer today is that you would be prayerful and let the Lord speak to your heart about what to give, the tithe, the offering, that you won't let the sun go down today without utilizing one of those online platforms to give as the Lord has blessed you to give. I'm going to ask God's blessings on our giving. We're going to have a video introduction of our preacher. We're blessed in song by our Kyra Praise team who's accompanied by our Sanctified Symphony Orchestra. And then we get ready to hear a word from the Lord. Would you bow with me in prayer? Lord, we give because we trust you and we give because we're thankful. You don't ask us to give what we don't have. You ask us to give a small portion of what you've already given unto us, which means before you asked, you blessed. So part of that blessing, Lord, we render back unto you now as our way of saying thank you, as our way of supporting the work and ministry of this church family and our way of preparing ourselves to be proven to be faithful that you may entrust us with more. To whom much is given, much is required. Lord, we seek to meet our requirements today. May your Holy Spirit guide us in our giving as we're grateful in Jesus' name. Amen. We welcome the Reverend Dr. Gina Stewart to Alfred Street Baptist Church this morning. Dr. Stewart joins us from Christ Missionary Baptist Church in Memphis, Tennessee, where she has been the senior pastor since 1995. Her leadership there has had a profound impact where the hungry are fed, the naked are clothed, and the transforming love of God touches the wounded and broken. 
Dr. Stewart's strong leadership was instrumental during her historic three-year term as the first woman president of Lot Carey. Her visionary leadership, inclusivity, and impactful initiatives, including substantial financial investments through new partnerships, marked her presidency with significant growth and innovation. Dr. Stewart's academic journey is a testament to her commitment to learning and growth. She holds a bachelor's degree from the University of Memphis, a master's degree in education administration from Trevecca Nazarene College, a master's of divinity from Memphis Theological Seminary, and a doctorate of ministry from the Interdenominational Center. She has also enriched her knowledge at the Harvard Divinity School Summer Leadership Institute and is currently pursuing a PhD at Christian Theological Seminary. She is a national board of the NAACP member, a trustee for the Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology, and a co-convener for the Women in Ministry Conference. She is a former board member of the advisory board for the African American Pulpit, the National Civil Rights Museum, and Bread for the World. Dr. Stewart founded Greater Works, Inc., a nonprofit organization devoted to philanthropy and ministry development and is a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. The next voice you hear after the choir's following selection is that of Dr. Gina Stewart. Alfred Street, please give her a warm welcome. Your simple name. 
Can you put your hands together and bless God for this amazing music ministry? You can do better than that. Come on, thank God for their versatility, their diversity, their rich contribution to this worship experience and these amazing musicians who have blessed us and ushered us into the presence of God. I want to invite you, some of you are already standing, but I want to invite you to help me give God thanks for your pastor, for the visionary, for my classmate, my friend and brother, a prophet, a priest, a communicator. I said this morning that he is moving beyond the category of just preacher or pastor. He is fast becoming one of the most prolific and profound communicators of our time and we are grateful to God I am grateful to God that God allowed us to live in this same generation and we know without a shadow of a doubt without any fear of contradiction that Alfred Street is a unique and impactful and transformative place you are blessed to have each other so why don't you just thank God for the gift of your pastor and we thank God for the gift of Alfred Street. I said this morning, I love Alfred Street Baptist Church. Uh, so thankful for the support that Alfred Street uh, always has always provided to Lot Carey, but in particular, the support that you showed and demonstrated during my three years as tenure and president. And certainly, uh, I'm still rejoicing over that million dollars that Lot, Car that Lot Carey received to do work in a new place and to enlarge its footprint in Ghana to minister to young women. What a gift and blessing uh, it is to stand behind this pulpit and to have this opportunity to share with you on today. God bless you, Dr. Judy, the OG of Old Testament. Come on, give God praise. It's a little intimidating, you know, you stand standing under... Because, you know, they know if you're right or wrong. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> but we thank God for her generosity and for her hospitality. She is a beautiful spirit, and you are blessed to have someone like her here at Alfred Street. God bless you, Dr. Judy. <laughs> Dr. Reverend Marcia, my namesake, Reverend Siobhan, my student from Virginia Union, who is kicking up steam over there, around the corner, everywhere she goes to Reverend Odessa, who has been a friend to me over the years, and to all of the members of the, the contingent of Lot Carey, to Deacon Mon Monterio and Mrs. Monterio, God bless you. We're so grateful for your support and friendship. And to the members of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And to all of the D9 that are present today, it is good for us to be here. I want to invite your attention to two passages of Scripture, Mark chapter 8, verse 1 through 3. I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 through 3, and Mark chapter 1, verse 43 through 45. Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 through 3, and Mark chapter 1, verse 43 through 45. It's Mission Sunday, and I pray that this word will be a blessing. Uh, to you, to all of you who are not only in this house, but maybe in your house or your office or online. It is good for us to be here and to have this 
medium uh, virtual platforms to take the gospel around the world. If you're there, say amen. And I'm reading from the New International Version of Scripture, and you'll find words recorded like this. When he came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. And a man with leprosy came and dwelt, knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately, somebody say immediately, he was cured of his leprosy. And then Mark chapter 1, verse 43 through 45, Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go show yourself to the priests and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. But instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in the lonely places. Yet the people still came to him from everywhere. If you're willing, you can make me clean. This is the word of God for the people of God. Grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord shall stand forever. Would you pray with me? Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope. Let my will be lost in thine. Take a coal from the altar now. Anoint my lips one more time. Speak through me and speak to me. Send a word that will comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. Change our thinking so that we might change how we live. Send your anointing now that makes this preaching assignment just a little bit easier and that will make this word eternally relevant and significant for the living of these days. I've done my study. Send your spirit. I've prepared to the best of my ability. Now send your power. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh in this place. Have your way now. Save a soul, salvage a life, and let a transformed life be the proof of this great gospel that we proclaim. We'll give you praise for it. In fact, we go ahead and tell you thank you now. Put our hands together and give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk today from the subject willing and able. Willing and able and able. What does it mean to live on the margins, to be pushed out, overlooked, and forced to live in the shadows of society? What does it mean to have your dignity stripped away, your humanity or one's humanity called into question. The great mystic Howard Thurman raised a similar question in his profound work, Jesus and the Disinherited. Thurman asked the question, what does it mean to live or be among the disinherited? To live with one's back against the wall. For Thurman, the disinherited are the ones who are pushed to the edges of society. Those who are oppressed. Those who are forgotten. Those who are stripped of power and voice. Those who are without agency. Those who are looked over, locked out, and left out. Living with your back against the wall means living with limited options, living with a range, a limited 
range of motion where the weight of injustice presses down and where hope is often dimmed by the realities, the harsh realities and vicissitudes of life. The leper in our passage represents this disinherited life. He is a man whose back is against the wall socially, spiritually, and physically. He's forced to the outskirts of society. He lives in a world that has already written him off. He cannot approach others without warning them of his unclean status. He cannot participate in worship couldn't go to the fellowship meals, would not be able to participate in communal life. His disease makes him invisible with the exception of the badge of shame that he wears. This leper in this passage knew all too well what it meant to live this way, for leprosy was more than a disease, it was a life sentence. A life sentence of isolation, a life sentence of rejection, a life sentence of being deemed ritually and socially contaminated and unclean. Wow. But this leper is not just a figure of ancient history. His story reflects the lived experiences of countless people who, who are a part of our society today. He embodies the reality of those who live among us, who are marginalized, who are the disinherited, those who live with their backs against the wall, the poor who struggle to survive in systems that are designed to keep them marginalized, the people of color forced to navigate life in a society where systemic racism still permeates every level. The immigrant or the refugee fleeing violence and persecution only to face rejection and hostility in a land where they thought they could receive help and be embraced rather than being shipped from one state to another state because of partisan politics. The woman who faces discrimination and harassment and silencing in spaces where her voice and leadership are needed but because of the body suit she's in, she is often there with her body, but her brains are not necessarily welcome. The differently abled who are among the disinherited, often facing systemic barriers that limit their opportunities and their voices and force them to navigate a world that frequently overlooks their potential. This leper knew what it meant to live on the margins, living outside of the city, away from community life. People went out of their way to avoid him. He had to announce his presence unclean, unclean, so that no one would come close. He's a problem to be avoided. Much like so many people today who are pushed out and made invisible by society's structures unclean and diseased, beyond the help of conventional religion or medicine. He's cut off from community. He's robbed of his personhood, robbed of status, robbed of honor, robbed of occupation, robbed of hobbies and family and health and fellowship and a worshiping community. This leper was marginalized and ostracized. He's unclean, and not only is he unclean, but he makes everyone else and everything else he touched unclean. Once condemned a leper, he was condemned and banished from the fellowship, forced to dwell on the outside of the camp with writ clothes and a bared head and a covering on the lip. He's considered so contagious that if he walked under a tree, anyone who passed under the tree was considered contaminated and unclean. Such was the level of fear and hysteria and discrimination and ostracism that this leper is forced to live with because of his polluted presence living on the margins of society. 
So polluted, so unclean, so avoided was this leper that there was a rabbinic saying that the healing of the leper was as difficult as raising the dead. A leper was considered a living corpse. Ritually unclean, the walking dead, a social derelict, quarantined because he imparts ritual uncleanness to others and regarded as sinful because of his condition. Leprosy was considered to be highly contagious and incurable and they had to live away from people near the garbage dumps of the ancient world where they could eke out a meager living. And by the first century, they were required to wear bells around their necks. Someone approached them, they were required to call out at the top of their lungs, unclean, unclean. But this leper, this leper had the unmitigated gall. This leper, with all of the baggage attached to his social condition, this leper, who was considered to be socially and ritually contaminated, contagious and incurable, had the audacity to approach Jesus. This leper had the audacity to break the law to approach Jesus. And may I pause here and say that sometimes there are some situations that can push us to the edge of our humanity to the degree that we don't even know how to be polite. We don't know how to follow the rules because we're in some desperate situation that require a 911 situation. What do you do when you're in a 911 situation, but you're dealing with a not yet system? What do you do when you're in a 911 situation, but you're dealing with not yet systems that don't recognize the humanity and the spark of God that is on your life? This leper, this leper had the audacity to approach Jesus and break the law because his circumstance, his social condition did not permit him to acknowledge the rules. Cut off from his community of faith, couldn't enter the temple, couldn't go to the synagogue, couldn't worship, couldn't lift up holy hands, couldn't bring his offering, couldn't help give away food to the 5,000. Come on here. Could not do anything because he is protected from the, he is, he is ostracized from the larger community. And in some ways, the barriers that existed were designed to protect the health of the larger community. But in this text, this leper doesn't have any tinkling bells to announce his presence. He doesn't cry out unclean. The text doesn't tell us that he cries out unclean. There's no cautious stripping away from those around him. He's living on the edges, bearing the weight of life and rejection and isolation, yet in a remarkable way. He dares to do what we do when we find ourselves in desperate situations. He dares to do what so many of the marginalized figures, Dr. Judy, have done when they are in a situation where only Jesus could help them. And I don't know about you, but there are some things that only Jesus can help us with. There are some situations, some circumstances, some barriers that only Jesus can help us with. Like Bartimaeus who despite being told to be quiet, cried out that he might receive his sight. Like the woman with the issue of blood who was deemed unclean and socially ostracized but she got in the press. While Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house to raise Jairus' dead daughter, she heard about this man named Jesus. Didn't bother to talk to a secretary, to talk to another secretary, to find out if she could get a meeting with Jesus. She just pressed her way through the crowd and said, if I can just touch the hem of the H-I-M, I believe I will be made whole. I tell you, some situations don't allow us the privilege of being polite. Like the Canaanite woman, despite being an outsider, yeah. demonstrates incredible faith and persist persistence as she pleads for her daughter's healing, refusing to be rebuffed even by Jesus' comment that the, it is not right to take the food, the bread, the children's bread, and give it to the dogs. This woman's boldness illustrates a deep maternal love and unwavering belief that Jesus can bring restoration even though Jesus is a product of his time. She challenges him to be who you say you are. 
I heard about what you did for the other folk. You can do it for me. I heard about how you healed the man, man born blind. You can heal me. I heard about how you healed the woman with the issue of blood. You can heal me. I heard about how you've been putting funeral, funeral homes out of business by stopping funeral processions in the middle of the day. You can do it for me. This man needed a miracle because he was in a 911 situation and he dared to go and make his request known to Jesus. And can I pause parenthetically here and say somebody ought to thank God for the privilege of making your request known. Do I have anybody in here who has ever had to make your request known? Do I have anybody in here that it has not been so long that you've forgotten that there was some situation that only God, only Jesus could help you with? Can you tell God thank you? Can you tell God thank you for the privilege to make your request known unto Jesus? For we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but he's been in our shoes. Uh, you ought to just tap yourself and say, Jesus has been in my shoes. Therefore, we can come boldly before the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. This leper comes to Jesus breaks the rules, transcends the boundaries, and ask Jesus, if you're willing, you can make me clean. What the leper seeks, I'm arguing or submit to you, transcends more than physical healing. We thank God for the physical healing. But I want to suggest that he's asking for more than physical healing. What he yearns for is restoration to wholeness. His plea is not just the removal of his illness, but the removal of stigma. His plea is not just for the removal of his illness, but for a return to community and dignity and belonging. His plea is not just for healing. He longs to be brought back from the margins, from the place where he's been ignored, from the place where he's been cast aside, to the center where connection and acceptance can flourish. And so here it is with shameless audacity. He comes to Jesus with an audacious request. Notice what the text says, Dr. Wesley. He said, if you are willing, you can make me clean. No, I know you have the power. The can in the declaration is a powerful acknowledgement of Jesus' ability and capacity. I know that if you have the temperament, even if you don't have the temperament, you can do it. Because you have the power and the ability to restore me. I understand that you possess the power to do what nobody else can. I've heard the testimonies about what you can do, so I'm not even confused about your ability or your capacity. His, his declaration suggests that he understands that Jesus has the power to transform lives and situations. It encapsulates both the faith and recognition of Jesus' authority and his Profound understanding of Jesus' capability. Somebody say capability. His capacity to heal, affirming that he believes in Jesus' power. Yet it is the conditional if you are willing, if you are so inclined, if you want to, if you propose to, if you are willing, if you have the temperament, if you have the inner essence to be identified with somebody like me. I know I'm unclean. I know I'm on the margins. I know the rules. I know I'm breaking the rules. I know I'm making a sagacious request. I know what the implications are of consorting with somebody like me. But then he takes it a step further and says, if you have the temperament, even if you don't have the temperament, you can make me clean. In other words, there's nobody and no thing that can stop you. You are God in the flesh. You are the embodiment of divine authority. You are the God who was present in the beginning in the Godhead. When God said, let us make humanity in our image and our likeness, you are the God who has the power to heal and restore, rooted in the essence of creation. You are God incarnate. You are the word made flesh who came to live among us 
moved in our neighborhood. Can you shout that he moved in your neighborhood? Can you give God praise for this incarnate God, the living expression of the invisible God? You are the sovereign God. You rule over all with authority and power. Your power knows no bounds. Your plans are perfect. Even when we can't see the way forward, you have already seen the script. You've written the script. You have pro You have gone ahead of us and played out the plans and orchestrated the events of our lives, weaving together both joy and pain. Come on here, Frankie Beverly. Sunshine and rain. You hold the universe God, in your hand. If you are willing, if you're willing, if you're willing, you can make me clean. In other words, even if you don't want to, come on here, you have the power to do it. In other words, he's saying, Jesus, you're in a unique position. If you're willing, you can make me clean. You have capacity, somebody shout capacity. You have ability, you have influence, you have the anointing, you have the power of God on you without measure. You've been baptized in the Jordan. The Trinity showed up at your baptism. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost with a dove appeared over the Jordan and said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. You have the power to transform lives and to heal wounds and to raise the dead and restore hope. You know how to feed 5,000. You turn a picnic into a banquet with ten, f five fish, f five, two fish and five loaves of bread. Your willingness to act is what makes the difference. No situation is beyond your reach. You're not some weak, tribal, impotent God. You are able to do more than I can ask, think, or imagine. Ask Don Staley about uncommon favor. You are the God who is able, the God who is able to do more than we can imagine. And I may I suggest that that's the good news of our faith. That the God who was in Christ, reconciling the world back to God's self. One translation say, the God who was in Christ, literally hugging the world back to God's self, is willing and able. You ought to know somebody said, that's good news. Uh, because sometimes the truth be told, people are willing, but they're not able. Their intentions may be genuine, but the circumstances, their resources, uh, systemic barriers can limit their capacity to effect change like the single parent who is juggling multiple jobs, who wants to advocate for better child care but lacks the time and support to do so. Or consider the community member who is passionate, Reverend Siobhan, about addressing gun violence but feels powerless in the face of political opposition and a lack of funding for initiatives or super majorities in their particular, uh, in their particular space. Similarly, grassroots organizations may be willing to push for economic justice, yet Yet they often struggle with limited resources and access to decision makers. Perhaps it's the public servant who is passionate about advocating for equitable policies but faces bureaucratic constraints and political pressure that sometimes stifle their efforts. Despite the fact that everybody in America wants it. Despite the fact that the polls show that everybody wants it. Despite the fact that they're willing to make a difference, they often find themselves navigating systems that prioritize profits over people. Working with colleagues who have caved in to dark money politics, obstruction, chaos, and cruelty. And then there are those who are able and not willing. They lack the temperament. Somebody shout temperament. It's not about capacity. They don't have the temperament. They don't have the personality trait that describes the essence of who they are. Temperament refers to the innate characteristics and traits that influence how individuals respond to the environment that's around them and interact with others. There are some who have the capacity, but don't, they are not willing. There are others who are willing, but are not able. They they are the, the, have the capacity but not the temperament. They are able but not willing. They have the power but lack the temperament. Willingness not just to see but to offer support for others in their pain. They have the power to actively advocate for policies that address the root causes of gun violence. Somebody shout, able but unwilling. 
engaging in dialogue and affecting communities and supporting comprehensive solutions such as gun control rather than relying on thoughts and prayers alone. There are those who have the power but lack the, but lack the temperament. They have the power to do something about economic justice and the well-being of workers to recognize the dignity of every individual and the importance of providing fair compensation, giving people an honest pay for an honest day of work. But they lack the temperament to understand the struggles of those living from paycheck to paycheck. They clown about giving somebody $15 an hour when they make $15,000 an hour. Somebody shout they have the power, but they lack the temperament. They have the power to actively support women and children, to champion maternal health, and to back policies and initiatives that will empower women, save women from maternal mortality, ensuring that their voices are heard and their needs are met. They can create environments where children and women thrive free from violence and discrimination and oppression. They have the power, but they lack the temperament. Like the Supreme Court, they have the power, but they lack the temperament. They possess the authority to make decisions that impact our lives, but instead they take trips and end up giving unmitigated, unbridled authority and power to somebody that does not necessarily deserve it. They lack the temperament, but they have the power. And Jesus says, the leper says to Jesus, if you are willing, you can make me clean. I stopped by to tell you that I can shout off Jesus' response because I've been living long enough to have some people that were willing, but that were able but, and, and not willing. And I don't know about you, but some of you have been in some situations. You can't be black in America and not deal with some folk that are able but are not willing. And you ought to take 30 seconds and give God some praise that God blessed you and helped you in spite of the unwilling. You ought to clap your hands and tell God thank you that the Jesus that the leper met is the same Jesus that's willing and able, that he's willing to engage the marginalized. He's willing to break societal norms. He's willing to transcend boundaries. He's willing to take away shame. He exemplifies a transformative love. Watch what Jesus says. I am willing. Look at somebody say, can I shout now? Or do I have to wait? I'm willing to restore you. I'm willing to put you in your right place. I'm willing to give you your life back. I'm willing to go behind the boundaries. I'm willing to give you reintegration. I'm willing to give you acceptance. And I don't know about you this morning, but I stopped by to tell you that that's good news. And I stopped by to tell you that it's good news because we serve a God that's not just willing, but a God that is able. That's a good place for you to give God a claim a praise that the God that we serve is an able God an omnipotent God a God who can do exceeding and abundant above all that we ask or think according to the power that's worked in us this affirmation is expressed in the omnipotence of God a God of all power a God who embodies both willingness and capacity a God who can heal you and restore you a God who will transform you and give you your life back a God who will save you and chase you down to bless you a God who will correct you and give you another chance and I just want to stop and tell God thank you for being a God of another chance that he keeps on giving me chance after chance the chance morning by morning brand new mercies we see all that I needed your hand has provided great is your faithfulness thank God for a both and God a God that gives me peace and gives me presence a God who walks with me and provides direction a God who leads me guides me, an ambidextrous God, a God who can multitask, who can manage my life and run a universe, who can handle my life and handle the Senate, who can handle my life and handle the
the Congress, an ambidextrous God, a both and God, a God who orchestrates, who pulls strings, who works behind the scenes, who makes a way out of no way. Do I have any company that can tell God thank you, that he's near to the brokenhearted, but he's attending to the affairs of the world. Can somebody thank God that God is willing and God is able? No problem too hard, no situation too difficult, no matter the challenge, no matter the situation, this God has a good track record. This is the God of Shipper and Pua. This is the God of Rahab and Joshua. This is the God of Sojourner Truth. This is the God of Harriet Tubman. This is the God of Martin Luther King. This is the God of Fannie Lou Hamer. This is the God of Septima Clark. This is the God of John Lewis. This is the God of Jeremiah Wright. This is the God of Howard John Wesley. This God brought us through many dangers, toils and snares, middle passage, enslavement, Jim Crow, segregation, discrimination, nationalism, oppression, sexism, racism, heterosexism and if God be for us who can be against us you ought to tell him thank you thank you for how you brought me thank you for how you taught me thank you for how you kept me thank you you never left me and I am persuaded that neither death nor life, angels, principalities, neither powers, present or things to come, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall, bring forth the royal diadem and crown him, 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 king of kings and lord of lords, shout yes, 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 yes. Jesus said, 
I'm not finished. I'm just going to stop. Because I'm about to tear this pulpit up here. I'm going to stop. Because when I think of his goodness and everything he's done for me, my soul, my soul cries out. So glad. That we serve a both and God. A God who will chase you down to bless, save you. And then turn around and bless you. Give you a hope and a future. Give you a new lease on life. Perhaps that's why that leper couldn't keep it. Edible shake. <laughs> to himself because he had possibly encountered others who were able but unwilling. Hey. Thanks be to God that this God that we serve, this God in the flesh, is a God who can do whatever God wants to do whenever God gets ready to. Thank God for a sovereign God who can do both, who has the temperament and the ability, temperament and capacity, the temperament and the power to heal us, not just physically, but to heal us from the inside out so that we can begin our life anew and rejoice in a new beginning. This is the word of God for the people of God. The grass withers, the flower fades. But the word, <laughs> the word shall stand. If you're not standing, would you do so? I want to invite our deacons to come to the altar. Somebody, the word you need to hear was just proclaimed. He's willing and he's able. God is willing so much that God sent our Savior to a cross to die to show you how much he was willing to save your life. And then he rose on that Sunday morning to prove how able he is to bring you out of anything. So beloved, on this Sunday morning, I want you to know that this is your opportunity to come to Jesus just as you are. There's no prerequisite other than an open heart that says, Lord, I'm ready to give my life back to you. And beloved, when you make that decision, you then become part of a church family where you go and grow, where worship becomes part of your daily routine. That weekly we gather in this space to mature in what God has called us to be. So I don't want to take for granted that just because you're here on a Sunday that you're in right space with a God who loves you and a God who wants to work in your life. But if you're here today and you're ready to say yes to the Lord, maybe for the first time or to give your life back to Jesus, maybe you're one of those that have strayed because life happens. And today the Lord is calling you back to his arms of love into this church family that you've been visiting week after week watching online you know God is calling you to this place so this moment of invitation I say to you wherever you are my sister wherever you are my brother in the balcony in overflow in the sanctuary if you'd make your way to the altar today to receive this amazing gift of salvation that is only available in the name of Jesus Christ if you're watching online you can put in the chat that you want to be saved, you can go to our website, fill out that membership form, allow us to reach out to you today. But in this moment, there may be one in this space who's ready to come and say, Lord, I know you're willing and I know you're able. Heal my life, change my life, work on my life. 
wherever you are, don't let something talk you out of it when the Holy Spirit is trying to call you into it. Won't you come today, my brother and my sister, in this invitation for you to come to Jesus just as you are. Come to Jesus. And we want you to do it while you have time. Bless you, my brother and my sister. This is for you, my brother, for you, my sister. Come unto Jesus. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Oh, while as they're coming, won't you celebrate my sister in Jesus' name? Unto Jesus. one more time there may be someone still making that decision won't you come bless you bless you this morning Do me a favor, if you would, extend your hand towards this front pew. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you that your gospel of willing and able has moved on the hearts of your daughters and your sons who come today, saying, Lord, take me back. Lord, we pray that you would invade their life and every essence of their being with your love, and that in this church family, we would connect with them as their siblings in Christ Jesus, as they grow in grace. Thank you, O oh God, for seeing fit to add them to the kingdom of Christ and allowing us to be part of their salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Help me celebrate them today as we thank God.
To all you who've come on this day, we welcome you with the love of Jesus Christ to the Alpha Street Baptist Church, even more to the kingdom of our Christ. We are thankful that God has allowed us to be part of what God is doing in your life, and we welcome you with open arms of love into a place that wants to encourage you to be all that God created and caused you to be. We're going to ask you if you would follow the lead of our deacons. They're going to take you to our reception room where we share with you what is awaiting you and the great things in store. Welcome to the Alpha Street Baptist Church. Help me thank God for them one more time. And before you sit down, can we thank God for the Word of God from the preacher of God on this Sunday morning, the Reverend Dr. Gina Marcia Stewart. You may be seated, Alpha Street. We're getting ready to leave this place today. Pray for our preacher. Um, she and I have got to travel tonight to celebrate the life of the Reverend Dr. Elaine Flake, whose mother, after 100 years, has gone home to be with the Lord. Um, we pray for the Flake family as they go through this season of loss in their life. Don't forget all the activities that are going on in the life of the church. If you forgot the dates and the details, everything you need is online, alfredstreet.org. And please be mindful that we continue to rely upon your giving and your generosity. Even though we don't lift an offering, we encourage you to be prayerful and allow the Lord to guide and to use you. President Stewart made allusion to it, but you all know that two years ago in Seek, we raised a special offering that we were going to use to be a blessing to release women from the slave industry in Ghana. It took us about a year to solidify all the details of how that money would be given and make certain that there weren't administrative costs and financing that took away from the gift. Uh, we wanted to put it in the right place and we determined that the Lot Carey Foreign, uh, the Baptist Foreign Mission was the only place that we could trust that that money would be used directly in the lives of these young girls in Ghana. And I want to thank you. It was your giving in Seek 24 with a little bit extra, Seek 23 with a little bit extra from 24 that allowed us to make a million dollar contribution. So thank you, Alfred Street. You just sold a million dollars into the lives of young women in Ghana who are going to be free in Jesus' name, trained, educated, and established to live their life because of your generosity. So thank you, thank you, and thank you. That's what happens when you give. That women across the world are set free in ways that they never could have done by themselves. We thank God for you. We're going to be blessed in song. Our Kaya praise team blesses us in our final selection. And then we leave after the benediction to go and change the world by sharing the love of Jesus Christ. to the Almighty, the all-wise, the eternal and the sovereign, the faithful and the omnipotent God who alone is creator of heaven and earth, to the God who's made God's self perfectly known to us in Jesus, who always and alone is our Christ, our loving Lord, our sacrificial Savior, our resurrected, risen, reigning, returning Redeemer, to the God who chooses to dwell in these earthen vessels of clay, through the sustaining power, promise, presence, purpose, and person of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. To that all wise God be both glory and majesty, dominion and all power, from now until eternity. And the redeemed of the Lord who loved the Lord and awaited his return said amen. Amen. Go on the grace of God and may the grace of God go with you.
Welcome to the Alfred Street Worship Experience. We sincerely appreciate your presence, whether you're joining us in person at 8 a.m. or 11 a.m. this Sunday or live streaming online via our website and social media platforms. Your participation is a vital part of our community. We are thankful and beyond blessed that you remain faithful in your giving. We have several giving platform options available. You can give through the ASBC app, text 73256 or scan this QR code, which will take you directly to our website's giving page. If you have any questions regarding giving, submit them to finance at alfredstreet.org. If you want to become a member of the historic Alfred Street Baptist Church, please email deacons at alfredstreet.org or complete the membership form on our website or the ASBC app. The power of prayer is transformative. Here at Alfred Street, we make prayer a priority for our community. Join us Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. If you can't join live, visit the ASBC website to listen to the daily prayer recordings. Join engaging co-hosts every Sunday for our fun and engaging pre-show, The Prelude, which connects our online viewers live in the sanctuary every Sunday at 7.36 a.m. and 10.36 a.m. You guys know what time it is. We are in Charlotte for part two of the Alfred Street Experience, scoping the scene. We're back at it again. Oh my gosh, back at it again. Back at it. Oh my gosh, back at it again. Back at it. Even though it's 2,000 seats, it feels like nice yeah. and intimate. It feels like yeah. a community. It's, it's very it similar to Kennedy Center. We've um, identified rooms. We walk the stage. We know how the risers are going to be set up. We know how far they're and how close they're going to be to the audience. And we're just excited overall. We got a lot of rehearsals coming up in preparation for this. It's just going to take some time to really transform this space, really make it feel like a sanctuary and really feel like holy ground. Good news is we got a few weeks. We, a few <laughs> we got a few we weeks to get it together. If the praises go up, the presence will come down. All right, Charlotte, let's go. Oh my gosh, back at it again. Back at it. Oh my gosh, back at it again. Back at it. ASBC youth of all ages, Kid Street, Crossover, and Higher Ground are invited to Urban Air, an indoor trampoline and adventure park in Woodbridge, Virginia, on Friday, October 11th from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. for a night of fun and food. And the best part, it's only $10 per person. Registering is a breeze. Just scan the QR code and you're all set. We are calling for volunteers for the largest HBCU festival in the country. We need volunteers to assist in many ways for the HBCU festival that will be held on November 9th at the St. James in Springfield, Virginia. Register today as slots will fill up quickly. We're going to Houston to celebrate the 20th pastoral anniversary of the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby. October 25th through October 27th, where the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley will bring the word on Sunday at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Scan the QR code for more information. Join the Social Justice Ministry for their Voter Education Forum on Tuesday, October 1st at 7 p.m. online to increase awareness of upcoming elections. The forum will include policy discussions and highlights to inform voters and supporters of ways to further share information with others in the community. Register today. The Social Justice Ministry is hosting a financial strategy planning for the future Zoom session on Saturday, October 12th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Learn goals, objectives, budgeting, and financial forecasting. We will discuss topics such as budgeting, saving, and investing for the future. An Authentic Life, a panel discussion with Dr. Thema Bryant, best-selling author of Homecoming, will be held on Saturday, October 12th from 9 to 11 a.m. in the sanctuary. You don't want to miss this dynamic discussion. Register to attend today. The Who's Who Ministry is hosting a cybersecurity awareness informational session on October 12th from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. You can register to attend in person in room 311-312 or online. Register today. Men save the date for the men's prayer breakfast on Saturday, October 12th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Your presence is essential and registration is required. Scan the QR code or visit the ASBC website to register. Also, we invite you to tune in to our Faith Forward weekly radio broadcast featuring Pastor Howard John Wesley every Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Magic 102.3 FM and 92.7 FM for a powerful sermon that will move you forward in your faith. Hey, Alfred Street family and friends. Are you visiting us for the very first time? Or perhaps you're new to Alfred Street 
and you want to stay connected to us or receive the latest Alfred Street updates via text. If so, all visitors text the word visitors with an S to our new direct text number 571-977-4525. That's 571-977-4525. We want to thank you for tuning into Alpha Street's live worship experience. Again, this is Charnel King, Social Media Manager. For more information on what's happening here at Alpha Street, make sure to check out our website and social media platforms. We hope you have a blessed week.